The fourth question you ask yourself when doing educational analysis has to do with the selection of knowledge. Now, like the other three questions, you split this into two parts. Firstly, you ask yourself a question about the boundary being open or solid. In this case, when you ask the question, what you're asking is, is the selection of knowledge solid? In other words, is there only one set that is determined in terms of what needs to get taught? Or is it open? In other words, are there many possibilities in terms of what gets taught? But you cannot only work with an open or a solid boundary. You also have to work with the logics of selection in their own right. And over here, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at two logics of selection. Firstly, a downward uh, logic where uh, a given high order concept determines what should be taught before it and under it and a more emergent type of selection where in the process of doing what you're doing uh, higher order concepts emerge. Finally we will take a look at an example of an emergent type of pedagogy uh, hole in the wall and we will take a look at a very um, downward uh, type of logic in uh, selection of knowledge and that will be the core knowledge foundation and the way that they determine their curriculum. Now with the solid or open selection uh, you, you have a situation where you can make a choice between either one definite selection where out of the variety that can be worked with uh, a certain specific set is selected and that is the set that is going to be taught no matter what. Notice we're not yet talking about the sequence, uh, we're just talking about what it is that needs to be covered. A very different way of doing it is to have a situation where you allow an open boundary with a lot more flexibility in selection. There are certain things which you know need to get taught but there are other things which also compete in the same space and it's not clear at the time of the start of the lesson what it is that's going to be taught and what is not that em that's going to uh, emerge as the process of the lesson occurs and it's going to emerge in the negotiation between the teachers and the learners over what the lesson is about. Now the boundary conditions give you insight into the pedagogic relationship between the teacher and the learner and uh, the amount of flexibility there is in what is going to be actually taught. But it doesn't give you full insight into the nature of the logics uh, working at the level of selection. And what I would like to do is I would like to talk to uh, two logics and their combination. Uh, downward uh, logics of selection, emergent logics of selection, and the combination of downward and emergent logics of selection. Now, with the downward logic, what happens is, is you have some kind of a higher order concept which must be taught. It's non-negotiable. That's what the subject is about. If you don't teach this, then you're not doing the subject. And to try and illustrate the case, I've tried to give you an example uh, in, a, in a kind of a micro way. Let's say there's a situation where you have to teach the concept of animal in its fullness. Now, you could just give an example of a set of animals, but that's not really going to get you into the concept. To get the full concept of animals, firstly, you have to understand that there are both vertebrate and invertebrate um, types of animals. And in terms of the vertebrates, you have to know that there are fish and mammals. And with invertebrates, you have to know that they, they break down, for example, into insects and to crustaceans or Krusty the Crab, uh, if you watch Spongebob. Now, if you have a situation where you have to do animals, what it means is it forces a logic where you have to do the things underneath it in order to get to that concept. And that means that the selection mechanism forces you to work from the top downwards. Now, it really depends 
what your highest ordering concept is when making a selection uh, uh, choice. For example, if your choice is, is that your highest order concept has to do with making sure that people are qualified for work, then what's going to happen is that's going to determine what the curriculum is in very different ways. If you make a separate choice that you're actually going to hone in on the internal workings of the subject in its own right, not what you have to do in the workplace. So higher order concepts in terms of the selection of the curriculum are vital. And that is where the real struggle occurs. Because if you get uh, dominance over the higher order concept, a lot follows in terms of what the curriculum should be underneath it. Now, that's a very powerful logic within in terms of the selection of knowledge within the curriculum. But there's, I think, an equally powerful uh, logic. And what that does is that works in an emergent way. Now, emergence uh, has become a very popular um, concept, especially with the latest developments in chaos and complexity theory. And you can take a look at that in your own terms if you would like to. But in terms of the selection of knowledge, what can often happen is that you start off with the complexity of the experiences and the events going on in the situation at hand. And in those local interactions, all of which are happening in a certain complex, wonderfully free, expressive way, suddenly what happens is it congeals, it comes together in a specific kind of a, a pattern which was unpredictable before it happened but when it happens it seems obvious it seems clear it seems like the way to go and what happens is you then chase that as what you're going to be doing in the lesson it can be a very powerful type of pedagogy because what tends to happen if you get that right is that everyone gets on board they feel like they're in a situation where they have agreed uh, they have participated and what is emerging actually speaks to the issue at hand. Now, within the sciences, uh, it's well understood that both downward forms of, let's call it causation, because that would be the technical term, and emergent types of causation operate together. And I've tried to catch this in this diagram. And what you can see, firstly, is you can see that local interactions result in an emergent higher order level and that higher order level with its concepts then lands up in a situation where it demands those kinds of smaller smaller uh, more uh, lower level elements because it actually needs those elements to exist and here you can see a kind of a tango that happens and it happens in education quite a lot where the local level interactions result in a higher order concept, but the higher order concept itself needs those local interactions. And very good teachers understand this process uh, at its deepest. And they can often allow the students and the learners to work in a way which seems to be emerging in a certain direction, but they push it and twist it in such a way that it results in the emergent level that they want. And when that higher level emerges, they then pursue the level at that point. These are very powerful um, ways of actually working with selection. Now, let me give you two quick examples to embed the situation so you're clear on that. And let's uh, firstly start off with uh, a more emergent um, kind of logic. That's the hole in the wall the Core Knowledge Foundation will be a more downward selection type. Now, the hole in the wall was a, a, an absolutely astonishing um, experiment which was started by Sugata Mitra in India. And what happened was he plonked a computer into a wall outside his office uh, and then he just left it there. And what he found was that a whole bunch of kids who were on the street often not getting that well educated themselves, congregated around the computer and started to learn from it. Uh, he was so amazed by the process that what he did was he set up all sorts of 
holes in the walls across all of India with computers in them and this spread to Latin America and into South Africa where uh, we have our own particular cases. And what he found when he came back was the kids had undoubtedly learnt more than before. Uh, they were better in English, they had a better understanding of all sorts of issues to do with uh, computer languages, they had started to use it to understand their schoolwork, their school marks had improved. And really interestingly what had happened was, was they had developed a more critical uh, and productive mindset. Um, but what you can hear from this is he gives them complete freedom to select what it is that they want to do. Uh, obviously Safe Search was on, but apart from that they were able to, to explore and check and find out and in the process of doing it, their natural curiosity allowed certain higher order learning types to happen. It's an astonishing account of an emergent kind of learning process. Now exactly the opposite approach is offered uh, by what's known as the Core Knowledge Foundation in America. Uh, the guy who started it up is um, a guy by the name of Hirsch. And what he's done is he's set up a situation where he's planned exactly what needs to be selected in the curriculum all the way from kindergarten all the way through to grade 12. And the idea here is if you precisely select exactly what needs to go into the curriculum, you do not waste the kids time. They learn and they learn and they learn and they learn and it builds, builds, builds. Concepts which you needed to use later you can trust are there because they were done earlier. Uh, information which they need about books, about plays, about science concepts, geography concepts, uh, music, all of that you can rely on because it's been planned beforehand. And if you do that properly, what happens through this tight, solid form of selection is you ensure that you progressively build uh, the student's knowledge base. So, when working with the selection of knowledge, ask yourself two questions. Firstly, what is the nature of the boundary in terms of selection? Does it have one set choice in terms of the selection or does it allow some openness in terms of what should be done? And secondly, look for uh, downward forms of selection processes where the higher order concept determines what should be done underneath it or look for emergent forms of selection where the processes uh, happening at the local level allow for higher order concepts to emerge uh, in the process itself.